You have tried keto. You have tried paleo. You have tried carnivore, Atkins, and intermittent fasting. You have cut carbs until you were miserable, and you have done hours of cardio until your knees gave out. Yet, every time you step on the scale, the number mocks you. Or worse, you lose the weight. Only to gain it all back, plus interest the moment you look at a slice of pizza. If this sounds like you, you are not broken. You are just playing the game with the wrong set of rules. The reason you are struggling isn't because you lack willpower. It is because you are relying on goal-based motivation instead of identity-based change. This is a concept popularized by James Clear in the book Atomic Habits. Most people say, I want to lose 20 pounds. That is a goal. It is temporary. Once you lose the 20 pounds, the goal is gone, and usually the habits go with it. That is why you yo-yo diet. Instead, you need to shift your identity. Stop saying, I want to lose weight. Start saying, I am the type of person who takes care of their health. It sounds subtle, but it is a massive psychological shift. When you are offered a donut at the office, a person on a diet says, I can't eat that. A healthy person says, I don't eat that. One is a restriction. The other is a choice. Align your decisions with the person you want to become, and the weight loss becomes a side effect, not a chore. Now, let's look at the mechanics. You cannot escape the laws of thermodynamics. Weight loss boils down to being in a sustainable caloric deficit. You need to burn more energy than you consume. It is simple, but simple does not mean easy. The first step is figuring out your baseline. You don't need a metabolic ward. You just need a calculator. A good rule of thumb for the average person is to take your body weight in pounds and multiply it by 15. If you are sedentary, multiply by 14. If you are very active, multiply by 16. Let's say you weigh 180 pounds and you work a desk job but lift weights a few times a week. We will use 16. That gives you 2,880 calories. That is your maintenance level. That is what you eat to stay exactly the same. To lose fat without losing your mind, you want to subtract about 20% from that number. So, in this example, you would aim for roughly 2,300 calories a day. This is your sweet spot. It is enough food to have energy for the gym and focus at work, but low enough to force your body to tap into its fat stores for fuel. If calculating this feels overwhelming, or if you are tired of guessing, this is exactly why I created this channel. My goal is to break down the complex science into actionable steps you can use immediately. If you want to join a community that prioritizes data over drama, make sure you are subscribed. We have a deep dive coming up on how to fix a slow metabolism that you do not want to miss. Once you have your number, you have to track it. I know, tracking food is annoying. Nobody wants to be the person weighing their cereal. But you don't have to do it forever. Treat it like a financial audit. Do it strictly for two weeks. Most people underestimate how much they eat by 30 to 50%. That splash of oil in the pan? 120 calories. That handful of almonds? 160 calories. The bite of your kid's leftovers? It all adds up. We call these phantom calories. They exist on your hips, but they don't exist in your mental log. Use an app like MyFitnessPal or MacroFactor. Scan the barcodes. Learn what a true serving size looks like. Once you have calibrated your eyes, you can switch to intuitive eating. But you cannot manage what you do not measure. However, a calorie deficit alone isn't the whole picture. If you just eat less, you will lose weight, but you might end up looking like a smaller, softer version of yourself. This is the skinny fat trap. To look lean and defined, you need to prioritize protein. Protein is the most important lever you can pull. It protects your muscle tissue while you are in a deficit. It also has the highest thermic effect of food, meaning your body burns more calories digesting protein than it does carbs or fats. Aim for 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. If you weigh 180 pounds, shoot for roughly 150 grams of protein. I know what you are thinking. That is a lot of chicken breast. You don't have to just eat dry chicken. Drink your protein. A whey isolate shake mixed with water or almond milk is an easy 25 to 30 grams. Greek yogurt is a cheat code. Egg whites are pure protein. By keeping your protein high, you signal to your body that muscle is essential survival tissue, forcing it to burn fat instead. Let's talk about food choices. You do not need to suffer. You need to swap. This is the concept of volumetrics. You want to eat foods that take up a lot of space in your stomach, but have very few calories. 
Swap your bagel for a low-carb tortilla. Swap 80-20 ground beef for 93-7 lean ground turkey or even 99% lean. Swap sour cream for non-fat Greek yogurt. I promise you cannot taste the difference when it is mixed with spices. Swap white rice for cauliflower rice or do a 50-50 mix. And please stop drinking your calories. A frappuccino is not coffee. It is a milkshake. A large soda is basically liquid sugar. These drinks spike your insulin and offer zero satiety. Swap them for zero sugar versions, black coffee, or sparkling water. If you make these swaps, you can literally save 500 to 800 calories a day without feeling hungry. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Failure. You are going to mess up. You are going to have a day where you eat the pizza, drink the beer, and skip the gym. That is called being a human being. The problem isn't the mistake. The problem is the spiral. This is where the two-day rule comes in. Never miss twice. If you binge eat on Saturday, do not let it bleed into Sunday. If you miss the gym on Monday, you must go on Tuesday. One bad day is a blip on the radar. Two bad days is the start of a new bad habit. Think of it like driving a car. If you miss a turn, you don't slash your other three tires and drive into a ditch. You just make a U-turn. Get back on track immediately. The all-or-nothing mentality is the enemy of consistency. Perfection is not required. Consistency is. Finally, we have to talk about movement. Most people think weight loss happens on the treadmill. It doesn't. Cardio is a tool, but it is not the foundation. If you run for 30 minutes, you might burn 300 calories. But if that run makes you so hungry that you eat an extra bagel, you have accomplished nothing. Focus on NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is the energy you burn just living your life. Walking, standing, fidgeting. Walking 10,000 steps a day is superior to a 30-minute run for most people because it doesn't spike your hunger and it doesn't require recovery. It is pure fat burning. Combine a high step count with resistance training three days a week. You don't need to be a bodybuilder. Just focus on compound movements, squats, presses, deadlifts, and rows. Lifting weights signals your body to keep muscle. Walking burns the fat. The calorie deficit reveals the work. So here is your blueprint. Calculate your maintenance calories and subtract 20%. Prioritize protein, aiming for nearly a gram per pound of body weight. Swap high-calorie dense foods for high-volume, nutrient-dense foods. Walk 8,000 to 10,000 steps a day. And when you mess up, Use the two-day rule to get back on track. Losing weight is easier than you think when you stop fighting your biology and start working with it. It is not about starving, it is about strategizing. You have the tools. Now you just need to execute.